Hello everyone, this is Archana and we are having Vidya with me. So we welcome you to the very first episode of Science Corner, a subsidiary of Mitsna, connecting science with you. In today's episode, we bring you an overview of sleep deprivation. So let us begin with the session. Hello Archana, how are you and how's your college workload? Hello, I'm fine. And as for the college workload, it's a never ending work. Like, you know, sky is the limit. And also, I think I'm not productive at all these days. Like, also, I haven't had a good sleep since a long time. Then, did you face insomnia these days? Uh, yeah, maybe insomnia or maybe because I'm watching anime all night. I see, you are sleep deprived and that's the main reason behind your less productivity. So, first, let's understand sleep. Okay, cool. Except for few animals like bullfrogs and baby dolphins who can stay awake all the time and simply relax once in a while, sleep is a phenomenon common to almost all living beings. It simply implies the natural resting state of our body. Also, good sleep is not only essential for physical health and mental performance, but it is also crucial for our overall emotional well-being. Oh, then I think nowadays sleep deprivation is a common issue among youths, especially in many college students like me and you. <laughs> yeah. And sleep hygiene is one of those things that we often neglect and which again results in problematic consequences like affecting our academic life. But the weird thing is that academic life is the one affecting our sleep schedule. <laughs> so the loop goes on. Uh, I'm entirely convinced. Also, screen-based technologies, high screen time, and low physical activity are found to be positively correlated with our poor sleep schedule and our poor sleep quality. Since your major is geology, would you like to elaborate a bit on how the brain and sleep correlates to one another? Okay, yes. Let's take a peek at the anatomical structure of the brain and discuss how the neuronal control of sleep works, like literally how our sleep-wake cycle is maintained. So basically, sleep and its mechanism are controlled by defined regions in our brain. You know, we have numerous neurons in our brain and they produce chemicals called neurotransmitters, which serve as a chemical messenger of our body. And they play a key role in sleep mechanism that are usually released at the terminal end of the axons. So about this axon, they are nothing but the nerve fiber which transmit or carry the nerve signals. In the mammalian brain, the cell bodies of the neurons involved in sleep are located in the brain stem, while the axons are located in the cerebral hemisphere of the brain. Okay, that is how it works. Uh, the bad thing about sleep deprivation is that humans experiencing partial sleep deprivation usually exhibit detrimental physiological responses and the worst part is that total and prolonged sleep loss could even lead to death. Ah, then I think I might be dying <laughs> soon. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you something about the sleep deprivation in animals. There was a warfare in a certain movie where they attack the enemy with drums day and night and retreat again, like which went on for around a week continuously, which really exhausted the horses because of lack of sleep and they can't be used in the war anymore. So okay. sleep deprivation is also equally harmful for animals. Okay, the disturbance of sleep balance, it leads to rise in stress hormones like cortisol. Such hormones follow a regular pattern under undisturbed conditions for like every 24 hours, which is also called the circadian rhythm, and it plays an important role in the regulation of sleep. Oh, about this human sleep, I think I have read that mono human sleep is called monophasic. Like we sleep once for seven to eight hours and it typically consists of single blocks of like three to five cycles of sleep stages, which is usually happening during the night only. Mm. But again, nowadays, I believe we are not following the normal norms of monophasic sleep and Maybe because of the workload, people tend to follow another type of sleep cycle oh. called the polyphasic sleep cycle. It is like sleeping three or four blocks. It's for about one to two hours, which may be either divided in the morning, afternoon or evening. Mm -hmm. But the thing about this polyphasic sleep is that it has been hypothesized by many scientists to be harmful, but yet there are no scientific proof for this. Yeah, interesting. Now we have learned that disruption of sleep cycle really do affect us. Yeah, I think so. Wait, do you think my mood swings are related with my sleep deprivation? 
Uh, absolutely not. Like, I mean, you're totally fine. Oh, am I fine? <laughs> really fine? Okay, so it is said that sleep deprivation is known to weaken the affective mood regulation and cause mood disorders. Interestingly, the results of a study establishes that young individuals are emotionally more affected than the older adults. Oh, then I think my emotional state is like so disturbed. Okay, so about this adult thing, it is quite a knowledge to me. Like, what could be the reason behind this? Mm. It was suggested that the older individuals prioritize their well-being and they plan to shift their attention away from the negative aspects to the positive ones. But like, irrespective of age, a sleep-deprived person will feel more stress, goal, exhibit lower vigor, and lower positive effects than a normal person. Oh, interesting. And I have come across several studies which support the statement that sleep loss can gradually affect mood states even in healthy adolescents. And the thing is, females are more vulnerable to it. Okay, let me tell you like some of the symptoms exhibited by a sleep deprived person. They are loss of interest in activities, anxiety, depression, feeling of worthlessness, hopelessness, and helplessness. But in complicated cases, like if there are suicidal thoughts and even attempts. Oh, great. And also scary at the same time. Yeah, yes. But wait, why do I feel that I saw all of these symptoms? <laughs> I feel so worthless, hopeless, and helpless. But wait, maybe I didn't recognize it myself, but am I having suicidal thoughts or am I not? <laughs> That is dangerous. It is because you are sleep deprived. Okay, so I have come across many articles suggesting that shorter sleep duration is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and increased mortality. Like, so how is this thing correlated? Okay, it has been hypothesized that a short duration sleep may be linked to changes in ghrelin and leptin production. It will ultimately alter the stress hormone production. So this ghrelin and leptin, these are hormones which regulate our appetite. Also, an investigation has been established to study the potential relationship between a sleep duration and cardiovascular disease mortality. A total estimate of six to eight hours of sleep per day is associated with lower risks of deaths and other major cardiovascular risks. Oh, so when you mention about six to eight hours, like the expression I get is like, wow, I'm dying soon. <laughs> I think I sleep like four or five hours or maybe less. Uh, this session made me realize that my sleep cycle is like totally disturbed. Yeah, that's too less. I think I should try changing my sleep schedule, but only if I can, if I can. Okay, so let me tell you something. Like most of us consider napping as a safe and non-invasive intervention to counter-react the negative effects of partial sleep deprivation. And also, I think most of us have heard about the power sleep, which suggests to take like short naps in the afternoon to boost our efficiency. But the thing is that a recent study suggested against this very notion of power sleep, saying that daytime napping is related to the increased risk of major cardiovascular events and even deaths to those with more than six hours of nighttime sleep, but not in those sleeping less than or equal to six hours of sleep per night. Mm -hmm. Again, you see in humans, the adverse effects of prolonged sleep deprivation and insomnia can lead to disturbances in our emotional abilities. Sleep loss destabilizes the waking state, impairs our mental ability and behavior, and thereby affecting our social, financial, and other health-related issues to a great extent. Have you heard of this thing called recovery sleep? Uh, no, I haven't. So let me explain. There is this thing called recovery sleep, like where we try to recover the sleep loss by sleeping extra hours on the next day. Mm -hmm. But it still remains as a controversy if one or two nights of recovery sleep on the next day of totally sleep deprivation fully restores the brain and the cognitive function or not. Oh, I've heard of this that in humans, it has been found that one or two nights of recovery sleep might be able to restore the cognitive performance and brain system to baseline levels, but neurobehavioral deficits, self-monitoring abilities, and brain metabolic decreases after total or chronic sleep loss cannot be recovered by this one or two nights of recovery sleep. 
So basically that means recovery sleep doesn't really help us. Okay. So have you come across things that suggest that sleep deprivation affects our memory power? I think I have having memory loss or maybe I'm getting dumb day by day. <laughs> uh, yes, sleep deprivation do majorly weakens a range of cognitive and brain functions, particularly long-term memory and everyday events and other related functions. One study reports about the almost complete disappearance of dream recall after a recovery night following one night of sleep deprivation were observed. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the thing. It happened to me a lot. I can remember a big memory of having a dream and like my mind wandering around. But when I woke up, I could not recall what had actually happened in the dream. And I really feel exhausted and tired. And maybe because my mind was not at rest. See, physically, I may be sleeping, but I'm not sleeping at all. <laughs> like, isn't it weird? And also, imagine like, how everything is correlated. Yeah, it is. So now let's discuss about the factors influencing sleep quality and depression. Yes. A very common issue we all face is the overuse of advanced technologies, spending most of our time on social media with screen time more than 10 to 15 hours a day. The mechanism behind this are considered probably due to alteration of melatonin. This melatonin is a hormone which regulates our sleep cycle. Also, have you heard about the blue light? Yes. It's, uh, it affects the central circadian cloth as, as well as the melatonin secretion. Evening blue light has been shown to suppress melatonin, which can negatively impact our sleep quality. Oh, uh, can you guess what's your approximate screen time? Oh, that's quite a question. <laughs> See, when I was having my online classes, I think my screen time might be 15 plus hours, including the assignment including the time that I spend on assignments. But now then it has been shifted to offline. But the thing is that my screen time is still 10 plus hours. Like I'm being chained with my phone and I can't take my eyes off my screen. So it really, really affects me. Oh, well, then I bet you would be experiencing very poor sleep just like me. <laughs> yeah. Because I have a insomnia with all this high screen time and all. Yeah, I see we're dying soon <laughs> don't say that okay so let's carry on with the session and another factor for sleep deprivation is the chronotype a person's alertness and activity time these circadian preferences may be classified as either morning times intermediate times or evening times and they have an important role in connection between sleep and depression Several studies settled that an evening chronotype is linked with poor sleep quality among young adults and college students. So night owls out there, beware, take care. <laughs> but I'm myself a night owl. So one research conducted for several years suggests that morning time has a protective effect against the potential harm of poor sleep quality. But wait, wait, don't get too excited. <laughs> it doesn't protect against the damage of lesser sleep quality. So don't ever think of compromising with your sleep time. Okay, but why does everything related with sleep deprivation revolving around our life? Because we are college students. <laughs> yes, we are. Just think about how we eagerly wait for the weekends. Like uh, one study suggests that students tend to sleep uh, like the way they sleep on the weeks, even on the weekends. However, other studies reported that students sleep significantly longer on the weekends, mainly females. <laughs> even I think it's very true because I sleep longer on the weekends. Yeah, even me. I try to recover all the sleep loss on weekends only. <laughs> so about this female thing, there is an interesting thing that females have been found to have higher risks of poor sleep quality. This may be associated with gender differences in sleep biology or socioeconomic pressures and cultural norms and even coping mechanisms to life stress. One study revealed that poor sleep quality is related to depressive symptoms in males, but the thing is, it is related with stress in females. Okay, we have discussed about how and why sleep deprivation is harmful. Could you also suggest some ideas to cope with them? Yeah, sure. Yeah. First thing I want to say is, go outdoors. Exposure to natural light, sunlight, is important in regulating your circadian rhythm and rework your schedule. Give yourself a reasonably easy day after losing out on sleep. 
Vidya, would you like to tell them that exercise also really helps in coping with insomnia and sleep deprivation? Yes, it is very important. We know that you're exhausted, but see, getting some exercise into your schedule could be one of the best methods of dealing with lack of sleep. Yeah, and lastly, I suggest you all to reduce your screen time. See, believe me, it helps. It really, really helps. I once took a break from all social media for like straight two months and it really helps. So everyone out there who is facing sleep deprivation and insomnia, I suggest you to take a break from social media and spend some time of your own. Okay. Here are some of our references. And now I think that we have pretty much covered everything. Huh? And the sleep deprivation, how it affects us and we should never compromise with our sleep quality. Okay, so guys, we'll be back together with another interesting topic. Do stay tuned with us. Also, we would love to see your suggestions, like which topic you want us to cover up for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.